And it's crazy because we had arguments where like I fought for alcohol like it was a good thing. Yeah. Like I was like, it makes me a better man. Yeah. It makes me peaceful. Y'all want me to play? <laughs> Where's my crown? Like, I made an excuse for that. Yeah. But you say, you want me to play? Where's the crown? Right. No, but, my, you know, and seeing my kids see that, I'm making an excuse for something that she was worried about. Yeah. And, because when she got out the hole, you know, that was in mine. And yeah. I'm I here. to pull them out. Yeah. Man. What, what, what was revealed to you in counseling about yourself? Well, first, first of all, <laughs> um, you are so strong. Like, I don't think you realize how strong you are and to to like help me come out of my dark spot, but then be stuck in his like love is a treasure chest. But once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I, I went back to Vegas. It was this guy. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics as far as having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage. So I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, know, Lisa? What you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Up and through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Lataris R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Winfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? Well, if you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, season seven has been absolutely phenomenal. And I thank y'all for rocking with us. You guys are finding great insight and inspiration through these episodes. And as we deep dive into tough topics, today's episode is going to be well, I'm going to find out what you think about it when I read the comments on the YouTube channel. Hey, if you're listening to us on streaming platforms, make sure that you leave a review. Make sure you rate the podcast five stars. Show your appreciation. That's how we continue to rank top 10 on Apple Podcasts. If you listen to us on Spotify, leave a review. I'm always reading those comments as well. Well, listen, without further ado, welcome to a Dear Future Wifey podcast. My new homies. <laughs> Dother and Chanel Sykes. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Yeah. How about you? So how did y'all make it to the podcast? So they have a very unconventional story. How y'all make it to the podcast? Okay, well. Uh -huh. What um, had happened was, you got to start off, what had happened was. Okay, so what had happened was, <laughs> <laughs> I stalked him. <laughs> um, I said that I was going to be extremely intentional for the next six months, right? And this was before I even came out and stalked you. Okay, all okay, right. Okay, so... I made some posts. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be intentional. Um, me and my husband have some things that we want to talk about to the world. And it's time, right? So uh, I was making posts. I noticed that the Black Love post. Every time I post him, millions of views. Every single time. When I post me, a few thousand. Crickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you're cute. Okay, we're y'all together. So I post <laughs> us. And um, somebody said, oh, you know, you should reach out and be on Dear Future Wifey. And I was like, oh, that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> How do I have, make this happen? So I started praying about it. I started writing it down. I started, I literally was going in my mirror in my bathroom and was like, you're going on the podcast. Y'all are going to be on the podcast. Things are going to just take off for y'all, right? I'm going to try not to cry in the beginning because I'm here right now. You're and in this thing. You manifested this thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So I made a post. I was like, hey, I need y'all's help because they were at this point, social media is used to me yelling at them <laughs> on my post. So I'm like, y'all tag this man, please. And everybody started tagging Dear Future Wifey podcast, started tagging him, started calling him. I had people calling me. I was like, hey, what do I say to him? Because he's asking me what y'all want. And <laughs> he called me and was on Instagram. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I answered And he's like What do you want And I was like I'm ready to be on the show With my man So here we are <laughs> With my man My man My man <laughs> I said What do you want You got right. my attention What do you want Chanel <laughs> And so she was like Hey I want to be on the podcast Why Why you feel like You got something to say To the world mm -hmm. She began to talk And I resonated With your story I resonated with the fact That 
it was one thing that you said that we're going to talk about, about how your husband loves you. Now, that's where I get emotional. Mm -hmm. So often we hear African-American men get beat up on social media about what we don't do, how, you know, a man should provide 100 percent for his queen and he has to do this and all this type of stuff. But you guys love journey isn't as conventional as most would prefer. Um, It's been different times where you may have been the breadwinner and all that type of stuff was we'll talk about all the, the, the complexities of love. But the great thing about it was that you guys have unconditional love for each other. And that's why I said, thank you guy for pulling my, my, my coattail and making space to hear y'all story because um, it really impacted my life. On top of that, you had no idea that we were in the same city, huh? No, no clue. Not at all. Where did you think? Where did you think I was? Where do you think the podcast was shot? Like LA or something. You give an LA vibe. <laughs> it's like, like LA vibe. Yeah. And so, and then and then someone told you, um, oh, shout out to my girl Tavia. Tavia was like, listen, do you know who Tavia is? Tavia was on the podcast, uh, her and Jewel. They did two episodes, one episode where they were on the cusp of a divorce. Mm -hmm. And um, the podcast sponsored their counseling and they were able to restore their marriage. And she's Mm -hmm. a dope photographer and makeup artist. And she said, she called me. She said, look, child. She said, these people want to be on your podcast. I don't know how she saw your post. They tagged (laughs) me or whatever. I said, I'm finna call them. (laughs) And so I called y'all and y'all are here. Today's episode is titled Worth the Weight, W E I G H T. Worth the Weight. The reason why I named it this uh, is because in our pre interview, you guys began to discuss a time in your marriage where ah, you wasn't feeling. 100%. You felt unworthy to some degree of being married. You felt unbecoming as a woman, and we'll get to that. Uh, we're going to unpack how y'all met and y'all's journey to this pivotal part of your marriage. Um, how did y'all meet? Dothan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the first time I saw her, I was with somebody at the time, and it was at a poetry night. And, you know, they do open mic. I think I. I just got into comedy at that time. So I was looking for a spot. So I had my uh, fiance with me at the time. Oh, you was right? engaged? I was engaged okay. at the time. Yeah. Just got engaged. So how, how recent was it, your engagement at that time? It had been like two weeks. Oh, you mm-hmm. just, just got yeah. engaged. <laughs> just got engaged. Right. So, <laughs> so we was on the stage and then uh, they brought this lady up. They brought her, Chanel. And, and I'm just watching. And all of a sudden, it's just like, you know, if, if anybody watch anime, you get this like this string cross your mind. It's just like a sharp thing. Like, like, wow, who is that? And the way she started speaking and start presenting herself, you know, I'm like, wow, OK, I missed out. You know, like in my mind, I'm just being honest. I missed out. So I didn't say nothing. I kept my distance because I knew at that moment, if anything come closer to approach, I already knew what you my gonna, intention you, yeah, was. You're going to shoot your shot. So I'm like, no, I, I chose. I made my choice. You know, I'm going to stick right here. And then uh, I'm so. Stand beside her. You stand, stand beside her. <laughs> yep. Stand beside her. But the problem with that is that we wasn't equally yoked. Explain. So, so when the opportunity came. So I'm the type of person where like, I like to. If I give you the energy, I like the same energy back. You know what I mean? And regardless of what the situation was or is. So it was a situation where I had my Honda Civic and it was broke down mm-hmm. and I had to go to work. And she had the car and I was like, okay, I got to go to work. Can you drop me off? And she was like, no. I was like, okay, can I take the car? She was like, no, you can take a cab. And I said, wow. <laughs> Did you really just... Okay, I don't know what I didn't do. I don't know what I did or whatever in that situation to make her say that. So I was like, all right, fine. At that moment, I was done. Spiritually, physically, I was done. And that was a check mark for me. So a couple weeks after that, uh, I moved out and um, got my own. And I always like I never seen her again. <laughs> like for months, I ain't see her again. Like it was what just you, on- what you looking for. I was. And I I followed her on Twitter. And every time she posted, even if it was five minutes, I DM'd her. Hey, what you doing? (laughs) She would never respond? Never respond. (laughs) 
Jessica Rabbit. That yeah. was her. <laughs> so, so, so you left my boy on red. I left, left him on that red. Why you my boy like that. I was not trying to talk to nobody because I was going through my own spiritual journey. I was celibate. I did. I wasn't. I'd come out of some bad relationships, and I was like, okay, God, what you want from me? So you did see his DMs. That's all. I just I wasn't in a place <laughs> where I was ready to talk. You know, I just was like, I'm working on me. I'm focusing on building my relationship with God, and when He says, then I'll write back. Okay, so, fair enough. I saw all of them. But as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I bought that camera, though, uh, what? She, she did it. What happened? What happened? So I decided to go to Poetry Night and work on, because I bought a Nikon, and I was working on my videography and photography, and uh, she showed up. I said, oh, snap. But she had a dusty wig on. I'm sorry, babe. but <laughs> It was part of the poem. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, she going through something. But, you know, I'm like, oh, but I was still like She was still beautiful though You know what I mean I was like It didn't It wasn't a deal breaker for me But I was like I could be fixed You know So At that point I started taking pictures And getting her video And stuff like that And then she ripped the wig off And it had her natural hair I'm like and on the camera I don't know if you can hear The video or whatever But I was like I was like Ooh. I, thank God <laughs> Okay said, oh, this, 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 this is a part of the set It's part of the set Okay I'm cool with that But And then I buy guns, buy guns after that. And then she. You didn't, you didn't talk to her afterwards? We talked, but then she DM'd me and said, hey, do you have any pictures and video of my of, performance? Of my performance. Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Would you like them? And she's like, yes. And she's like, how much do you want for them? I said, I, let me, want, I want you in exchange for them. <laughs> let me take that to the movies. Yes, I want you. And she was like, all right, fine. You know, like she like yeah, she accepted that. And I seen Think Like a Man. That was Think Like a Man came out in 2012. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I saw it like three times before I took it out. You know, I'm like, let's go see that. And, and I had seen it too, but I didn't care. We didn't care. <laughs> we went to go see that movie. <laughs> he said I was gonna see that movie. <laughs> but the crazy part is like like a year later, like she told me like she wasn't attracted to me. Like my parents did not Captivate her eyes Because uh-huh. he dressed like Justin Bieber And I always tell him He would dress <laughs> like Justin Bieber. Bieber And I liked I, When he used to come to poetry night With like Skinny jeans And like boots <laughs> It was just giving Justin Bieber Because they had like The little rips and stuff That was a style But then another That's time That was a style He came and he looked like He worked that sprint You know yeah, I like it <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he had on like his little slacks and you know his little polo top. I was like, "Ooh, who's that?" And he came. He oh, you like that look? Mm. You like the sprint look? Yeah, mm. I was you like, just, "Ooh." I saw I could do both, right? Yeah, he did both. So, and then I hid the jeans when we got married. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> she did. I was like, "Where are my jeans?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> Where are my knee hole jeans? Where are my knee holes? <laughs> they left. They gone, baby. And so, and so, y'all went to the movies. Was mm-hmm. it automatic chemistry at that point, or what? Absolutely. Yeah. So. I knew what I wanted when it came, when I saw her. So at that moment, I was, I I was in a mindset like, okay, I'm not rushing this. Like I do my other dates. Like I initially wanted to get to know her. So I didn't make no like crazy moves or, Mm -hmm. you know, try to kiss nothing. I just wanted to really get to know who she is. And it threw her off. Because mm-hmm. like at first she didn't want me to pick her up and drop her off because she had so many bad experiences from guys where like you know they always they only do something because they wanted something in return. Explain that the bad experience you wouldn't allow him to pick you up. Wow, what happened? Okay, so I went on a date before I decided to be celibate. Right, that was my last date, and that's when I was like, Ah, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Like, okay, so the guy wanted to he didn't want to pick me up. I met him there and. He, I guess because I met him there, he was like, you got to buy your own movie ticket. He didn't tell me. So I was buying my own movie ticket. Mind you, like a week before that, I went to this movie theater and the guy behind the register wanted my number. And I was like, no, no, thank you. I don't want to, you know, whatever. So I hope you didn't see him again when you got, when you I did. saw him again. So and give me the ticket. I get the ticket. I'm like, he's like, yeah, we need two. And he was like, where's your money? And I was like, oh. Okay, here you go. So then we go inside and the guy that asked me for my number, he was working the concessions and he was like, do you guys want anything? And so the guy was was like, yeah, let me get, what do you want? And I'm like, I want some popcorn and a drink. Cool, let me get her a popcorn and a drink. And then he fixes it and then he says, where your money? And I was like, what? And the guy that like wanted my number is like, <laughs> <laughs> he's so bad. 
Should have dropped that zero and got this hero, right? So, see, um, I, see, girl, I'm working this concession. You know what I'm saying? I got your popcorn. <laughs> but what did it was, what I pray to God this man don't watch this because he gonna know I'm talking about him. What did it was when it was his turn to order his stuff, he pulled out a coupon for a free soda pop and he put the pop on the end. He was like, Can I get this soda pop? <laughs> and I was like, We're done. Like, I never want to go on another date. So <laughs> now, what did he say in the movie theater though? You oh, gotta explain so then, that part. What do you do? What do you do in the movie? So theater? we're in a Tyler Perry movie, right? <laughs> so I should have known this is gonna go terrible because I'm watching Tyler Perry with this man and um, Claire Huxtable. What's her name? I always uh, yeah. So you you saw uh, um, a family that prayed. No, no. I mean the. Um, is it the family praise? Is it? I don't. Yeah, I, yeah, family it praise. All, it's all because Felicia Rashad character yes. today was in that house and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. so he's like, "Oh my gosh, she's so smoking hot. She reminds me of my mom." And I was like, oh, "It's time to go. I gotta go." I don't know why I said yes. You said that about Felicia Rashad. Yeah, and I was just like, "I never want to do this again." He put smoking hot and reminds me of my mom all in the in same one. sentence. Yeah, I just saw it again in my mind. I'm like, so. sir, can you let's unpack that? What have you and your mom done? <laughs> I didn't want like to ask. Know that. It I was like no. To know. And so, at the very end of the day, he's like, "All right, bring it in. Come here, give me a hug and a kiss." And I was like, "We're good. I'm good. I'm going to go home." And he called me the next day. He was like, "I really think that went well. We should be boyfriend and girlfriend." And I was he like, did not say that. To you. Yes, he did. He, he just said y'all supposed to be together now. He did. And I was I'd like, be like no "Sir, thanks. you don't know how to read the room. Let's, let me teach you how to read the room at oh this my point." God. And what's funny is he's at the poetry spot where I met him. So, like, a lot of guys would, like, want to talk to me, but I wasn't trying to talk to anybody. So, they all told him, yeah, good luck. Like, she's not going to talk to me. <laughs> right. They told you. Yeah, what well, they told they, me. They, they knew you was about to shoot your shot. But I, not really. Because I, I, I was, like, I throw it out there, like, doing the conversation. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. You know, Chanel, she bad. Then, like, when I say that, because a, a dude going to say what yeah, they, they yeah. going to say what they say about that yeah. person when so you say that name. And, uh... I ain't hear nothing negative about it. I ain't hear like, oh yeah, she turned to flip like yeah. uh, all I hear like, yeah, man, she tough. She got this wall. I don't know who hurt her, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> So I took that like, oh yeah, that's that's good with me. I'd rather it's hear that. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. He, he didn't want to hear that, yeah, you know, everybody done been with her. You know what I'm right. saying? You know, so and so the poet, he done he done hit, he done hit. That right. was me in high school right. though. <laughs> I always dated the chick that everybody all this is the thing. I remember in high school, I dated a chick that everybody slept with, but she was saving her marriage for me. What? She, 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 she was saving for me. She so she said, I I slept with everybody else, but I'm gonna wait till marriage to have sex with you. I know you was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I know you was mad. The whole football team, like at that time, I'm here holding hands, happy, like looking yeah, crazy, you know, looking crazy. <laughs> and you're like, hey, bro, you better chill with that, man. <laughs> she had a whole tape out and everything. I'm like, wow, she had, she had a tape out. <laughs> you thought that man, was going to be easy? I was easy. like, come you, you, on. You, you want to marry her? Why me, man? You want to marry her? Huh? You want to marry her? At that time, no, <laughs> no. I was still trying to figure out because I'm one of those people like. If I like you You love hard Yeah And I commit myself to you Yeah But as soon as I see something Across the line that comes It's like I'm I'm, I'm you out I'm, You I'm, tapping out Right I have a certain line You know So it was the line with her That she was trying to wait To have sex with you it, That was that was <laughs> Look that line was very thin I ain't <laughs> When I heard about that I was like Oh yeah this is it <laughs> I remember I called her on the phone and told her she. <laughs> I think she was at a barbecue when I called. She told people like, Shh, "I'm trying to hear on the phone." I'm like, "Oh man, I gotta say it again." Oh, okay, it's gonna be a hard breakup, you know. But oh, no. <laughs> you say I won't be with you no more. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's all She bad. asked why, and I'm like, "Come on, you know why? You won't give me no. You gave it to everybody else. You won't give me no. <laughs> you been. Stingy. I didn't say that. I wanted you to. You been stingy. You done gave it to everybody. Ray Ray, Junebug, <laughs> not here. <laughs> Steven said it. I don't know why you smashed Tom. But Tom, you let him hit, but you won't let me hit. <laughs> he said, I'm done. You had something yeah. special. That's why she saw something special in you. Yeah, see? She tried to, yeah, she tried to keep me on the back end like the dummy. I don't, nah, I'm not doing that. He said, like the dummy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. And so y'all went to go see uh, Think Like a Man, and what happened in that moment? Was it was you still kind of like, were you open? Because I know you just, you was getting over heartbreak and coming wherever you were at in the state of killing per se Chanel but was you like I'm open to receive love at this point yes so what's funny is when he asked me out on a date someone else asked me out on a date the same day yes <laughs> and the other guy I've known since elementary school he wanted to take me and my daughter hey, look, to he said, what? ain't the first time hearing this is it no no, no it, I forgot about it yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I forgot <laughs> he wanted to take me and my daughter to 
um, Six Flags here for the weekend, and we lived in Shreveport. He wanted to take me to see Think Like a Man. And we oh, you was living in Shreveport at the mm-hmm, time? Mm-hmm. Okay, you weren't yeah. even here. Mm-mm. He wanted to take me to see Think Like a Man, and I had already seen it, so I was like, okay, guy, like, which one? He was like, Dother. And, and you drove like, up to Dallas. No, the other guy is the no. Do, he told me pick Dota. God told me pick Dota. That's what I'm saying. So, but he was in Shreveport. Oh, you lived in Shreveport. Lived in Shreveport, Shreveport too. Yeah, oh, yeah. We we all lived in Shreveport. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get the whatever. So right. the poetry thing was in Shreveport. Right, was in Shreveport. Right, yeah, right. yeah. I just words, made it shout like out it was to a, words over lattes. They make couples. People get married from words over lattes all the time. That's like, dope. It's absolutely wild. Yeah, it's a dope. That's dope. So this all happened in Shreveport. Mm-hmm. So y'all was in Shreveport. God, you heard the voice of God say Dotha. Yep. I thought I was done when she told. She called and told me she was like, "Yeah, he wants to take me and my daughter to Six Flags." I was like, "Oh yeah, I ain't doing that. I'm done." <laughs> I ain't got the money Literally, for that. like, they were calling. Like, at the same time, I'm texting Wayne. The Don't other one's you calling. Say. I was like, Don't I'm, say you tapping out. I'm tapping out. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't had the money at the time. Like, I I'm done. I said, she gonna pick him. First of all, let's put reference around this. How old were you at this time? Because you said you didn't have no money to go to Six Flags or take her daughter out to Six Flags. How old were you? Like, 20... I had to be 21? Yeah, no, 22? 22. Yeah, I had to be 22. Yeah, so you're about 22. 22 years old. Yeah. And how old was your daughter? Uh, Haley was two. No, no, two. She was three. Three. She was three. Sorry. All right. So you had a three year old, and um, and so so yeah. Then that gives more reference about understanding about where you were mm-hmm. mentally and how you probably the reason what led to you like oh, I'm sick of these dudes right now. I got to heal. I got to go through this. You're a young mother. Um, so that means that you had your daughter or in high school, your senior year. No, my freshman year in college. Freshman I got year pregnant in college. My, my first semester in college. First semester. She was out there and got <laughs> Sorry, pregnant. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was supposed to be studying, but <laughs> studying anatomy. Right. Um, and so so that's what happened. And so you're, uh, what was the relationship with you and the child's father at this time? Um, when I got pregnant? Well, I, I, when you met him. Um, when you then came back, rebounded, wanting to try dating again. So it was fine because he had his own relationship. Like okay. I had gone to basic training and, you know, he had time to heal. I had time to heal. And I had a boyfriend before I met him. So like right after I met him in basic training, tech school. So. All right. So you went to you went to the military. Mm-hmm. You went to the military at that time. All right. So now you heard God tell you Dother. Mm-hmm. And then y'all went to the uh, went to the movies. And then afterwards, what did you feel? Did you feel anything? OK, so let me just say this. I'm so glad I picked that date with him because it was it was like a straight out of a movie. How? Okay, so he was like, can I come pick? Uh, I was like, okay, I can meet you where we're going. He's like, no, I'm coming to pick you up. And I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, you can come pick me up or whatever, but I'll bring my little money. Didn't need it. <laughs> he dressed like he was like the manager at Sprint for this date. I was like, okay, I see you looking. He had a little watch on, you know, a nice little haircut. I'm like, okay, I like this. So he takes me to Macaroni Grill. We're talking, and then we go to the movie. And in the movie, like he's not trying me. I feel like women have this thing where we look for keywords. That y'all say that just completely shut us off. So like if we're feeling you and we like you and then you say something like, yeah, well, you know, wonder what it's like in the bedroom. You're done. All right. Right. Like, don't do that too early. Don't make us uncomfortable too early. We still in the I want to get to know you. He never made me feel uncomfortable. He didn't even try to kiss me. And I was like, what, what, do he like me? Like, so would you so had he tried, would you have reciprocated? Yeah, because I kissed him. <laughs> oh, you kissed, you kissed him? The- <laughs> after the night was over. So, like, after we went to the movie, I was not ready for the night to end, right? Okay. And Did you know that? That she was ready for it and she didn't want it to end? Yes, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. How did you know that, Dalton? Because at first, <laughs> first time we was in the movie, you kissed me in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Because she put her chin on my shoulder and she, like, kind of tapped it. For me to look, because I was re- like really watching the movie again for the third time, <laughs> and then her eyes, like her eyes, was like looking with her glossy lips, and I'm like, okay, yeah, see, I see, see what you want. want. I see what I see, you want. I see what you want. But at the end, like I knew she didn't want it to end because we still had like a small conversation at the door, but she didn't want to invite me in yet because I knew like she- now you miss something. What? So right after the movie was over with. He was like, I got to go do this thing. And I'm like, what thing? Oh, He's yeah. like, oh, I got to go. Um, I got to go host. And I'm like, oh, OK. He's like, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So we go to this event and we walk in. I'm thinking it's nighttime. 
it's older, like older women there. And I'm like, what's what kind of event is this? <laughs> like, they're playing like all this 70s and 80 music. He's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the back. I'll be right back. I'm like, all right, cool. This man come out in a fro, a dashiki, bell bottoms, and platforms, and orange sunglasses. I was like, what are you doing? I was done. He was Don Cornelius for this event. And I was just like, is this happening right now? Like, this is, I've never heard of this. And it's for senior citizens. <laughs> And so they're all dancing, right? There, a slow song comes on, and he like asked me for my hand to come dance. So we're slow dancing in the middle of all of these. Well, he old dressed up people. in his costume. Yeah. In the costume. And when I tell you that night, I was like, I like him. What did I you really like about? Tell me what you like about that moment. It was just so different. I had never experienced anything like that. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, I know I'm gonna be his rider. Like I'm going where he going. Like this is so unorthodox. The just the whole thing about it it was like god was giving me such huge signs to be like the, he is for you like i don't know how 22 I years to show old you're yeah. about 22 at this time mm -hmm. and you felt this moment not a moment that was polarized like why are you hanging around the old people what you doing with this no nope, i said, fell in love with that don cornelius i was like oh lord jesus he just <laughs> he can get it yeah don, don can get it too yeah much. basically but i had to you know i had to keep holding myself together <laughs> hold together All was right. you embarrassed by that moment you think that she wouldn't respond well to that moment you know what? The funny thing about me is that I didn't care. Yeah. If the energy matches, it matches. Like, you know, because yeah. I think at an early age, like at the high school, I used to, I used to live mm -hmm. with people approval a lot. Yep. To the point, like the older I got is like, I'm going to do me regardless. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's hard to embarrass me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I accept what I, you know, what yep. I do, you know. So at that moment, when I saw her energy matching mine, I'm like, okay, yeah. It made yeah. you like her more? Right. Made a whole lot more. Because Streetport, like, you know, and there's people ever like people everywhere like that, but the environment in Streetport is not like that. You know what I mean? It's it's rare where you Cause my my lad, my ex is trying to get me get tattoos on my neck, and you know, like, hey, you should start rapping. You know what I mean? Like, you, you never try to sell drugs. Like, nah, like <laughs> they try to make me something I'm not. You know what I mean? So, I never thought about selling drugs. That'd no, be cute. That'd be cute on you. That'd, That'd be, be cute, cute on right? <laughs> buy you buy a Dodge Charger. You know you like get Dodge Charger. <laughs> oh my god! Put some twenty fours on. It. Yeah. So so y'all had that moment. Then what happened? I, we saw each other every single day. We was on the phone all day, every day for like the next Literally week and a half. Literally sleeping on the phone. Literally. Literally. And it, it was such a short amount of time. It was like a week and a half to two weeks. And then I was like, okay, what's next? And I just moved back in my mom's house because mm -hmm. uh, my my mom and dad got separated at the time. And I came back to help and try to weigh in. Because mm -hmm. he had two younger sisters still at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also I was trying to save money too, and uh, but yeah, I just talk to her every day. But I went her to her house every day. My mom, she had them things like, okay, you going over to me? You need to just live over there because y'all shacking. <laughs> like you just basically at this point, stay over there or stay here. Yeah. Wait, what you had your own place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was me and my daughter. I, I mean, I had a one bedroom, but um, yeah, I lived um a few exits right off the base, so it was really easy for me to get back and forth. Okay, so you were still in the military at that time. Mm -hmm. and so, I had just got in the military. Oh, like I was brand new, brand spank new. Hmm. So then, so then, so here it is. So now y'all talking to each other every day. Uh, y'all are inseparable. How did it? How long did it take for y'all to get committed? Or was it something that was never even talked about? Y'all just we was just like we go together it. without yeah. even having the conversation. Well, we did. We both. I told him that I wanted to be in a relationship and he was like, I do too, but I got to, I got to tie up some loose ends. He had to let some people know like, Hey, cause he had people that he was talking to because mm -hmm. he didn't think that I was going to talk to him. Yeah. So when I told him, Hey, I'm, I'm a hundred percent interested. He was like, I got to let these women know. And he Fair. told me up front, I need to let them Respect know, all that. Yeah. you know, because it's only right. And I'm like, okay, I understand. So how long that's going to take? <laughs> yeah. about, uh, click over and tell them and I'll be on the other yeah. line. Go ahead and click over. I'll be the on the last thing I will ever do is embarrass myself. <laughs> I never wanted to be the guy between the liar between two, you know, Ooh, in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. I, and I don't so, um, so at that time, you, you was only just talking to him? Mm-hmm. And so um, you went and tied up your loose ends. How long did it take you to tie up your loose ends? He called me back that day. <laughs> 
I remember being on base. I was on break on base and I was like, I want to be with you. And he was like, okay, me too. I got some stuff I got to do. And then when we met later on that day, he had told me he had. Now keep in mind, like some of them slipped through the cracks. I couldn't tie loose ends with everybody. Some people came back from the past because I never changed my number. But the crazy part is like when we had, we had our downfall when like only things happened when she had my phone. <laughs> An ex from years ago would text Hey how you doing And now I gotta get the question Who is this And I tell her who she is And why she have your number I'm like I had this number since high school Yeah he never yep. got rid of that number Yep I did at that point Yeah at that point <laughs> He I got was like alright <laughs> you ain't got a new number I got a new number But I mean I understood that too Because I had people Who would hit me And be like Yo what's up And I'd be like mm-hmm. Don't, don't call my phone Don't call me no more mm-hmm. I'm no. in a relationship I love you Right See you later Don't you mess this up For me and my baby Look one time Somebody called me While I was with him And he was like Yeah where you at I'm about to pull up I was like No you're not <laughs> He said I'm about to pull up You're not Man. <laughs> And I told Dothan He was like Wow that's wild You know like But we respected that About each yeah, other Yeah and, and the thing about it When you're mature you can't hold somebody Because then somebody Would be like So what makes him So comfortable That he can just Pop up like that Or whatever mm-hmm. you like I don't know What the devil Is doing right now That person that I didn't give them Permission to feel like this right. They just said it And my responsibility Is how I handle it exactly. But you exactly. can't Hold me accountable To what they said Right yeah. <laughs> You right. know You hold me accountable To how I respond Right um, And like you said You had this phone number For years And people do Try to circle the block They do try mm-hmm. to come back And be like Hey Hey big head What you doing mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Now I'm in tr- So who is she mm-hmm. You know it's, it's Look look through the thread You, you saw last night I talked it was in 2018 right. So why, why are you Getting mad about yeah, it I ain't trying to get The Taryn Howard's voice I hate that When What's she up? asks me questions She's like hey, Let me tell you something man. You know I'm like, oh man, I don't know man. I don't know what she is man. You, you about to cry Like you know Look man I'm just, You scared man you, Listen here man Man <laughs> So what happened So would you be the type That was very insecure And, and uh, accusatory in, the, in your approach And response to him When you saw that type of stuff I don't feel like was I? I don't feel like I was. Great looking. What was she? Huh? I feel like a small part of it. How would she? So but, so be her. I oh want y'all no. to role play. What would she say? Girl, text you, and you said when she had your phone. Why would she have your phone? <laughs> so okay. She didn't have my phone because of insecurities. She had my phone because she had a pay as you go and she didn't have no internet. And I was with Verizon at the time. So I, I had unlimited very internet. Simple life, okay? My she life was very, very simple. simple. I loved so, it. Bills was low. So she said, pay as you go. <laughs> she yes. was. So when I would be driving, she'd be all on my internet, running my gigabytes, <laughs> all on Facebook, signing her page. <laughs> So all my it information was, was exposed. Phone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we came across that. Like it'd be situations like she wouldn't be looking for it and they'll come. And even with the answer that I give her, it like, you know, most of the time it'd be like validation for, her, but you know, sometimes it'd be like, okay, did you sleep with her too? Like, <laughs> we're very honest with each yeah, other. So like, yes. Yeah, you gotta be. Yes. You know? We talk about past relationships. We So would that bother you about when he tell you, yeah, I slept with her? Would that bother you? It would only bother me if she's like still around. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but, but these they weren't. That's what I'm saying. But the fact that he did, would that bother you? He said in the past. No. I'd be like, how was it? Are we I wanna know. Like <laughs> Would that bother you when she if she told you about a guy that she slept with in the past? No. I mean, because it was before me. So, but at the time, it's like. Are you talking about now when I'm older? No, age I'm, or I'm talking. I'm, we're gonna talk both because we're gonna oh, get okay. there. I'm talking about in twenty because yeah. I want to see that y'all mature in y'all's communication, or has it always consistently been like that? It's always consistently yeah. been upfront, be honest with each other because we we literally fell in love so quickly. Like we got married so quick, we had to be honest with each other each other quickly. We didn't have time to like. Not lay it all out in the very beginning and then find out something months from the end or yeah. years from the end. Why you say that? Why you say y'all didn't have time for that? Because the people do that all the time. But the opportunity to be honest was right then. You know what I'm saying? So why? Say that why? one more time. You said the opportunity to be honest was when? In the beginning. 
Mm-hmm. I don't want to find out later. If I got questions and you got questions, we going to lay it out. Let me tell you the importance of that. It's because at that point, you have nothing, you have no accountability to exactly. somebody's. My past, I, I ain't accountable to you by my past. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the reality is that when y'all understand that, that's how you can meet somebody where you are and mm-hmm. say, listen, this is my experiences. They say, this is my experiences. And you make an informed decision whether or not you can accept those experiences in mm-hmm. your present or not. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you accept that. Be like, listen, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Cool. We put it behind the blood and we move on, you know, and say now from this point on, this is how I like to see you govern yourself and vice versa. And this is how we're going to operate. And we're going to always have uh, uh, moments of honesty so that when something happens and you feel vulnerable in the moment we created that foundation foundation of trust mm-hmm. so that if you ever have a, a, a weak moment where you feel like you're about to cheat on me you looking at this other woman whatever you say hey listen I'm telling you I've been very vulnerable lately you haven't been giving me this uh, I feel shut out on this moment and I feel vulnerable in this moment and this is what happened this girl hit me up I did respond back to her I said XYZ I felt very convicted about it I'm letting you know that up front. Right. If you create that level of atmosphere, that's where you truly fireproof your marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, And so y'all created that foundation early on. And then how did it go from sitting on the phone to now y'all sharing the same space in holy matrimony? A toothbrush. What happened with the toothbrush? He brought it over. He brought that toothbrush over and then other drawers started coming over. (laughs) Socks. I started washing his clothes. Like, I had brought her Wi-Fi. She didn't have Wi-Fi in her house. I told you I was very simple. I had DVDs. Not in the case, on the floor, face down. That doesn't matter. The title was up. I'm like, you, you scratch it. You, you go scratch Go do this. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. You, you brought you brought Wi-Fi to the house? I brought Wi-Fi. He I brought loved technology it, though. to you the house. Technology. I loved it, though. Because I can tell, like, she's in her box. Like, she's... Not of this world Like she just Handed her business And that's another thing too Like I saw how she You know Took care of her daughter And how she handled With the father of her child And their relationship Because one thing That I found out Like I Before her I was like I can't date a woman with kids Like I I want my own family Yeah But then As I got older I was like A real woman Would show Her colors In a negative situation So When I saw how she acted you know, with the, their relationship, I'm like, oh, they got a good relationship. No, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, I can handle this. Everybody's, you know, mature. And I was like, oh. Think about what you said. You said, as I got older, you're 22 years old with that ideology. You know, it's people that 40, 50 that still are insecure about stuff like that. You're 22 years old saying that I'm watching how she moves with the father of a child and you didn't want it to be tumultuous. You didn't want it to be dissension between them. You say, I want to see a healthy relationship with somebody that had quote unquote, a negative impact. As you said, like y'all have, this is a y'all's relationship didn't work out. Let's see how y'all operate yeah. now. And you said, Oh, if I can see that in that situation, her being the mother of my child and we're being married in this scenario, Oh, I win Mm -hmm. at 22 years old. I salute you, King, for even thinking like that. And then so you moved in. And when did you decide to propose to her? Uh, I think I was in there by, what, three months after six months of dating? April. We started dating in May, June, July, August. I think you was in there about July, August time frame. And then he proposed in October, like October 19th. And we got married November 4th. Because I feel like once you... That was enough time for me to see, you know, most of the, if I, if I would have, red flag, if I would have saw it, I would have been saw it, you yeah. know, at that time. So, and we was basically with each other every day. So at that moment, it's like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, I, cause my, I know my mom, she's old school. She's like, y'all shacking up, shacking up. Shacking up. But she didn't like, she always say that, but it didn't, don't, it don't bother me. But at the time, it's like, you know what? If I'm going to do this the right way, I'm going to do it the right way, you know? And once 
And well, I know I know Dota said it don't bother him about shacking up, but don't y'all continue shacking up with the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Right. No, subscribe. I need you to subscribe. No, yes. <laughs> Please. Shack up. That camera right there. That don't camera right there. Up. Don't be shacking up. Subscribe. Don't play. Don't play. <laughs> don't be like Dotha. I need <laughs> I'm subscribed though. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we <laughs> but uh <laughs> oh, messing with you. And so and so your mom so your mom was in your ear, but she still, in a sense, supported it. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah. What, what did your mom say? <laughs> My mama loved him, so she didn't say nothing about it. you. Don't let this boy move in with you. No. She At sure all. Did. Nope. She supported a hundred percent. Soon as she met him, she was like, "Oh my god, I love him!" Like there was no problem. What did that mean to you for your mom to to feel like to to co-sign on the dude that you who now holds your heart? It meant a lot because me and my mom are pretty close. Like, and at that point, we were talking two, three, four times a day. So, f- for her, because there were people who would like, there were so many people who loved us together. But then there were so many people who were like, "Dana, moving kind of fast." You know, I had close friends who were like, mm, "Slow down." But to have like your family, especially your mom in your corner, um, yep. it really does help because then I know I can bring him around her, and she's gonna make him feel comfortable. Yes. She's gonna make me feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So when they say moving fast, what do you think they meant by that? We got married, like we said, hello, my name is Dothar and Chanel, and I do in seven months. Like, that literally is our time span. And so they, so when they would give you advice, because you hear people say, y'all moving too fast. Mm-hmm. So tell me what the proper time span is then. Because if I'm moving too fast, then what? So so that's why I like to challenge people. Like, mm-hmm. I've been moving too fast. So when should we, when should he propose to me? Well, I can't tell you when. I'm just saying that. Well, when? No, tell me. I'm moving too fast, so just tell me what's the actual speed. Did anybody ever tell you least wait? Uh, uh, what they say four seasons? Or did they ever say, "Hey, mm-hmm. wait my brother a did. year, wait my, two years"? My older, my oldest brother did. He didn't say wait x amount of years. He just was like Snoop because he called me Snoop. Snoop, <laughs> is this really something that you want to do? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you don't want to, you know, like take your time. Like how you feel about him? My brother is extremely protective of me. Both my brothers. So, um, you know, they had to fill him out. They met him, and he was like, we like him. Or my oldest brother, I like him. I just want to make sure he's right for you, right? And don't. And I never took it as like. Oh, he doesn't support. He was at the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like he was there for the engagement. You know, he hugged them and and we went from there. So he probably would have been the only person not to tell me if I should or shouldn't do something, but to help me to think rationally at the same time. Mm-hmm. But see, I was in a place where my thought process was whatever God is telling me is rational is going to be my my level of rationality. I can't go based off of anybody else telling me something because I'm going to have people looking at this and be like, oh, she is really tripping. But now the same people who look at us and be like, oh, they did that too fast. are like, dang, can you tell me? Can you help me? Like, hey, this is what I'm going through where I, you know, I haven't gotten married yet or X, Y, and mm-hmm. Z. And that's the thing. Like, it's different. I, I think I learned early because my grandfather, he was a preacher and we used to go to Cachada like a lot. That's the country. And it's called Cachada. With the Cachada. Yeah, they only have one gas station. And bees. And uh <laughs> bees. In the church at the fan. <laughs> but I learned that like you literally have to listen to what God has for you. And no man no other man can give it to you. You have to accept that yourself before you can accept other things from other people. Because if you set other information from people empty, then you're going to be filled with their information and not what's for you. Mm -hmm. Facts. You know. So what would you say when people are listening to you right now and they say, well, it sounds like y'all hear from God and y'all are hearing from God at that uh, age. Did you hear God say that it was okay for y'all to live together? (laughs) (laughs) You know what? He actually, when we when we did move in together, we started having sex. Can I say that? Well, we started having sex. Uh, why not? Be, be, yeah, be truthful. Yeah, Go ahead. What I did. What I did. Okay, so <laughs> we was having sex. It was like real good, right? And then he was like, we can't do this. And I was like, huh? I was like, what it's you like, mean? I got some live-in penis now. But, you what know, you mean you, we can't do this? Yeah. And he was like, it's not right. Like, I love you. I want to do this right. We live together. But I it's, it weighs heavy on my conscience. Doing this It was way Hold on let me ask you So that weighed heavy on you mm -hmm. Why? Because Growing up right The whole idea before marriage Was 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 a weigh on me 
And keep in mind, I wasn't perfect because I was doing that before. You know, so so, so so you were taught to be to save yourself for marriage. Yeah, and it was a weight on you. So W W E I G H T. Yeah, worth the weight. So here we go. <laughs> so it was a weight on you, and I wanted to be right with her. So even with the flaws I had before that time, you know, I wanted to breaking up with the girl because yeah. she didn't give you no. Right, right. <laughs> even I was always like that because it was like. One of those, I had a situation where I slept with a girl and that was in high school and I put on Kurt Franklin because I felt guilty. And you talking we, about why you was having sex with her? After. You talking about stomp? <laughs> Made me clap my hands. What you doing? Was, <laughs> it was, we was in my 97 rodeo and she was like, why are you playing? The storm is over. <laughs> And I'm like, you, <laughs> you, you ain't Jesus. You, oh my gosh! But I always had that guilt for that. So, but oh in that gosh. situation, it was like, okay, I can't keep going back to that rabbit hole, and you know, knowing I'm doing something wrong, and then ask for forgiveness, mm-hmm. acknowledge it. You know, so it's yeah. like, how many times will he actually forgive me if I know what I'm doing before I do it? So at that time, I was like, okay, I love this woman. I'm living with this woman. I don't see any red flags. God, this must be it. I need to go ahead and do it. Because she was like, it was funny. When I say like, oh, it's a spiritual thing for me. You know, God, she was like, yeah, but oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> we'll do it one more time real quick. So now you, weren't trying to, you weren't trying to hear him? No. And that's so bad because I came from a place where God told me to wait. And now I'm like, okay, the wait is over. <laughs> <laughs> I it's found time. the Jesus <laughs> Yes thank you Lord I'm so thankful for this Man. Man. I'm ready And he was like Well now we gotta wait A little bit longer I'm like Ugh. Well heck I ain't wait too much longer Y'all got no, married what, got A couple married. days later <laughs> And then right after We did it I was like This feels right Like We didn't see it I got guilt free sex Right now <laughs> We don't have to pray After sex anymore right? We sure enough said That we ain't gotta pray About it no more <laughs> <laughs> So oh, honestly man. Did it feel different yeah, because yeah, like y'all was I, already living together. Y'all had sex while y'all was living together. Y'all stopped for what period of time? Two? Because what? How long? Because he proposed in October. October nineteenth. We were married November fourth. <laughs> so it was a very short time. I think we may have had like one or two hiccups in there. We was like, God, dog, it. We wasn't supposed to do that. So y'all waited about a week. <laughs> <laughs> we was like, we need to move. Then this I think up. at that point we was getting close. I was like, man, God knows my heart. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, God knows we me. We don't do it in seven days anyway. Ain't no difference. <laughs> <You're> right, right. <laughs> seven days with a lifetime, you know. He so, knows. Yeah. come out and watch. He knows um, how it goes. It did feel different, though, because it was like, it was God's approval. There versus it is. feeling like we were having to hide and be shameful for doing it. Now we can just do it. I want to ask you this, because now we're here, and I'm going to have an episode where we really talk about this. Uh, do you think it's our upbringing that brings about that condemnation? The fact that we were inundated with that ideology like you said he was inundated with the ideology of waiting till marriage to the degree to even though he was sleep with women he'll go play uh kirk carr and everything right. <laughs> he'll start playing uh, the clark Peek. sisters and John right. Peek, you know you know he'll start playing this music to try to cleanse his soul uh versus somebody else who has never been raised in that they have zero conviction about it they'll just be like i don't what's wrong we're sex we're so yeah. a natural thing or whatever um that's all about being equally yoked yeah Yes, and that's what I'm saying. So now both of y'all share the same ideology, but in different times, because you said prior to him saying that to you, you were like, you were practicing abstinence, and then you met him, and the abstinence journey went out the window, and you like, we good now, you know, and then he's like, nah, let's get back on that, and you like, uh-uh, hold on, what you doing? No, 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 <laughs> right, no, no, right. no, 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 you can't be doing this. Um, and so, but then you said you got married, and you felt... Like we don't have to repent anymore, basically after sex. <laughs> Didn't me, you did, go, go ahead? Okay. What you about to say? I was about to say, but there's a reason why. Why? Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm scared. She right? looked at him. When we first had sex, I had no clue what an orgasm actually felt okay. like. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. okay, so when it was happening, I was like, "Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, something's wrong." I thought something was wrong. I felt like this whole, you know, all yep. over my body. I was yep. like, "Something's not right." That's the and devil. He this kept the going. Devil. <laughs> It and feel I, too good to be the devil. Right, right. And I was like, what was that? Like, what was that? And he was like, it was probably orgasm. I was like, 
So all, all this time All this time I'm gonna go call up Some dudes and say that <laughs> <laughs> So of course I'm like We need to do more of this Because this is something new It was like rap, Sex like wrapped In a new box Or yeah. something So yeah. I ain't wanna stop You know how real that is uh, I've talked to women In the past And I see studies about Most women Don't have orgasms Most women Have had sex And they haven't Been afforded The opportunity Of having an orgasm I was talking to um, Brittany Who she's gonna come On the podcast Brittany Here it is So you've been Asking to come (laughs) There it is So she's a Christian Sex therapist Mm -hmm. And um, it's been Interesting Because she's been Wanting to come on I was like I don't want you Sitting there talking Because there's a whole Lot of single people on That that listen to the podcast You're gonna be Talking all that stuff You're gonna get Everybody horny You know what I'm saying (laughs) So it's like, why, why? You know what I'm saying? She said, but we should be able to frame these conversations and have healthy conversation about it because a lot of women said to teach them what they could be doing and understanding their bodies, um, even in their single season, so that when they get married, because she she provides coaching for couples you get y'all could get married and don't even know how to please each other because you've been mm-hmm. taught so for so long that your bodies are bad and you mm-hmm. can't touch it and you, you you just you don't even you ain't never touched your own vagina mm-hmm. except cleaning it and that's it hands off don't touch it don't all this right and then you're married and you've been programmed to not enjoy sex mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying sex is only for procreation unless you're having a kid that's the only time you have sex it's people that have very thwarted ideas when it comes to sex Mm -hmm. and so um so when you felt that feeling come over you it was something that you said hey listen this feels good let's not stop so then did you demonize it or did you say this is of god i don't think i thought any listen christianity or the devil thoughts all of that went out the window it was like i want more of that like that that was you can ask it was like tunnel vision i was like sex (laughs) Let's go. Did you try to jump your ball? <laughs> man, it. I had to run, man. Yeah, I did. Was... <laughs> I used my height and my, you know. To grab them, to yeah, get a hold of them. Gatorade. I, man, I was like, you what? You got to get Gatorade, <laughs> energy bars, protein shakes. Pretty solid <laughs> one. Let me rest. Let me rest. <laughs> so that should let you know, like, I really do enjoy sex, especially yeah. with him. So to go from enjoying it to like wanting to cover up and wanting the lights to be off and not want to it made a huge difference good and that's a great transition so you got married at what time did you what happened you gained a bunch of weight and let's talk about that okay so i didn't gain in the beginning when he first met me i was super fit i was fine like <laughs> just mm. fine right yeah, look at yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we got married. We started having kids. And when I had the first baby, it was like, okay, body shook back. Second, not so much. And then I miscarried and then had a, no, I miscarried and then I had two back to back. So that put a lot of weight on me, a lot. Um, so much to where my First uniform, of all, let's stop on the miscarriage. Uh, mm-hmm. So sorry to hear that. Um, um, and you have my condolences. A lot of times uh, women uh, have miscarriages and angel babies and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And we just kind of just, it's like a, uh, a afterthought. We just skate right on over it yeah. because a lot of people are afraid to actually address that. Yeah. Uh, but again, um, y'all have my condolences. And uh, yeah, continue. This going to sound real crazy, but I feel like, okay, we, I wanted a boy. He knew I wanted a boy. When I found out that I was pregnant, I prayed to God that it would be a boy. And that's the baby that I miscarried, right? And then we had DJ who came right after that. And we were like, okay, good, we're done. We got a surprise with Ivy, the last baby. Mm-hmm. I swear, I think that Ivy is the baby that was the the miscarried baby. And really? it just wasn't her mm-hmm. time. Baby, because that baby's something else. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm so pretty sure God gave her right on back to me. We have. We well, actually, we got six. Yeah. If we want to claim everybody. Yeah. So we got six together, but we have four to live with us. Mm-hmm. You said claim everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a daughter before you got married. Before I got married. So. Uh, and then she had. A, uh, she uh, has a brother, but her brother is not his biological right. child. But when we get the baby girl, we get the baby boy. He's just grouped in because yeah, we already got good. a lot, so it's not really a difference. Separate, to us. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we already got a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd be like, Can I, gonna hurt? Come yeah, on, be like, come on, let's go. And he fits in so good with them. They call him his brother. So I mean, for us, it's not a big thing. 
Oh, Lord. Y'all so young and y'all just get it. Y'all just understand <laughs> it. It's always been like that. So I know to, to rewind that back, you know, doing the whole, the marriage. And uh, because after we had a first Kinsley, so uh, that was a heavy weight on me because I was like, okay, I'm married. I have a kid. Like, okay, I'm setting goals. I got to have... 5,000 in the bank. I had credit score had to be this because yeah. we were living on base at the time. We were mm-hmm. doing this, this, and she was like, okay, that's fine. And a few months in, it's like all out the window. She's like, I want a baby. And I'm like, yo, we live in paycheck to paycheck. Like, yeah. no, I'm not like, so we had a, a battle and a disagreement for a little, for a, a little time with that because I feel like, okay, if I can't provide and keep up now, I can't keep up with the other well, kid. Well, a whole nother responsibility. The whole nother responsibility. So during that time, I had to really, really pray about it. And also we still had to communicate about it. And this is the part where I had to like let go the whole uh, weight where it's like, okay, you got to remember, God got you. You have to really remember that. God really have you. Mm-hmm. So if my wife wanted a kid and you were about this stuff that you can't even take with you and try to set it up and do all that. You're going to get that regardless with the kid who was not. So what? And at the time, what were you doing from a career standpoint? I was just driving trucks for Sigma Supply. You were in the office when we had DJ. No, that's not, that was before DJ. Oh, we was on base. DJ. Okay. We was Kinsley. on base. Kinsley. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, driving trucks. And I was, cause we just got back from Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yep. We had just made it back. You Making right. $15 an hour. You know, no, we when we got back from Vegas, we had DJ. We are we took Kinsley with us to Vegas, mm-hmm. remember? So, you're talking about DJ, yeah? DJ was, in, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. I'm talking about before we made DJ. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm tracking, <My laughs> yeah, bad. yeah. <laughs> before we made kids. DJ, it's just a lot but of <laughs> when that's what I'm saying. So, when we got pregnant. Well, now we, <laughs> when she got pregnant, <laughs> now people say we, <laughs> yeah, right. now we, we say we, it is. Um, so. When that happened, that's when I got the job in the oil field Mm. and the money started coming in. Then the realization is like, okay, I'm making the money, but I'm not home. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Then we got pregnant again. (laughs) Because when I was home, I was so, I was gone so long. It was like, and she, she was was ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey. Got pregnant again. All right, let me go back to work. Yeah, we got pregnant with Ivy, but you know what? When we got pregnant with Ivy, I remember being in the car and he was like, we have to figure something else out. There's no way we send all of these kids to daycare. It's too expensive. We're going to have to figure out how to work from home or work for ourselves. Like we have to leave them something. And that stuck with me for so long because now we're entrepreneurs. We haven't worked in over three years, you know. So it was like having Ivy really put go mode into perspective for us. It was like, okay, we got these kids. We don't want them to be in daycare. She's never stepped foot in a daycare. DJ. Was in daycare for like what a month, mm-hmm. and it was we just been doing it ever since. And so at what? So after you had your second child, is where you started gaining weight. Mm-hmm. Second, and then no third and fourth child. So third, sec between the se- hold on. So you had the second child. So you the weight never left after the second child. Is that what you're saying? No, because I was in the air force, so I had got that weight off. All right, after the second child. So what point did it start getting? Out of control where it began to affect you The pregnancy that turned into miscarriage Because I was already carrying And I started gaining that weight And then literally a month after the miscarriage We got pregnant with DJ Before DJ turned one I was pregnant with Ivy So it was three pregnancies Back to back to back And I could not shake that weight I had never been overweight So I didn't understand how to lose weight Only how to gain weight Because I had been so small all of my life and you said what happened when you were you were training? It was an incident that happened. What happened? Ooh, which one didn't? All right, well, so it ain't one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one of them that really stuck out to me was they made me take my PT test, and it was right after I had Ivy, and I didn't pass my PT test, and I hadn't passed um a PT a few PT tests because one of them I ended up injuring my knee, and that really helped. That didn't help with make you know helping me lose weight. Um, but that and then coming back in my uniform thinking I'm ready to serve and, you know, be this tip top shape airman. And then um, a co-worker say, um, oh, it looks like she could eat me. Or, you know, he looked at me he was like, damn, you done got real big in front of everybody. 
And I'm just like, dang, I can't button my uniform. It was. Oh, you couldn't button it? No. Mm-hmm. No, I couldn't. Like, I was like rolling up the uh-huh. pants. It was so bad. You was rolling up? What do you mean? I was too big? Like, the buttons, I couldn't button all the buttons, so I would just fold them in. So it looked like I was like, I would basically have to like wear my belt, but my buttons were open. Mm. And my uniform top, it wasn't no room. None. You, just, you couldn't got a bigger a uniform? I didn't want to. Because that would be giving in to the fact mm-hmm. that accepting the fact of I've gained all this weight. Yep. Absolutely. And then so then how did that affect your marriage? Um, I didn't want to I didn't want to take care of myself. I didn't want to like when I was at home, I just wear oversized shirts and leggings. I didn't really care. Um I just was in a really negative spot. Like he would be like, let's have sex in the day. And I'm like, no, it's too bright. Turn off all the lights, close all the doors. I don't want to see nothing. I didn't want to get on top because, you know, you get on top and you feel like. Your body bouncing yeah, right Yeah, the bounce would be like, you know what? I would like hop off of him. But like, you know what? We're done. <laughs> you just jump off in the middle? Yeah. He'd be like, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't want to do this. I, I, you know. Yeah, I was going to hit from the side, but mm-hmm. you ain't going to be a. I'm not going to be. And so how did you, how did you receive that? Did you that understand was, what she was going through, or did you feel it, it was rejection, or what? What did you? No, think? I, I, I understood, but at the same time, I think it was unfair because I was there telling you, you know, you're beautiful still, regardless, you know, of the situation, and I still got the short end of the stick. I feel like so. I mean, because her dark hole was also my dark hole too. How? Explain. So even though she uh, she was battling with her her weight. Um, uh, I was not only battling like on not only I wasn't getting none, it was like just being a husband and father. You know what I mean? And I felt like everything was weighed on me at that time. Mm-hmm. When and then uh, kind of turned to alcohol as an excuse to you know numb the pain to numb the pain and you know mm-hmm. just kind of like you know what? Okay, if you don't believe me, you're beautiful. Then. Yeah, and he you would know. get so mad when other people would tell me like, "Oh, like I would, we would go out and, and girls would be like, oh, you're so pretty.' I'm like, thank you, and it would really make him mad. He'd be like, like, you don't be you thinking, I tell you all the time, you act like, yeah. Right. I just felt like he just was saying it, you know. You really felt like that. Yeah, I just felt like he just it was something that he felt like he needed to say to make me feel pretty. Did you uh, did you honestly feel that she was pretty? Yeah, and it was just because this is the thing with me. And I tell her it's not the you got to She's gorgeous. So the physique, that's just pretty. But if you don't know the mind of that person or the heart of that person, they're just something to look at. So you tell me that you're a sapiosexual. That's called sapiosexual where you're more attracted to the intellect. So mm-hmm. you're telling me that because you knew the mind of her, it surpassed whatever uh, quote unquote deficiency, if we use that word physically, that she may be going through. You're saying, no, this girl is an amazing woman. That overrides all that. She, she's still beautiful. Yeah. And you just couldn't receive that? No. And um, did y'all go through counseling or therapy during that time? Yes, we did. <laughs> I'm talking about with the, um, the one in the military. The, the military, you, you, military counseling? you had a free counseling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that and when we moved, when we, uh, we went to the Couples retreat at one community. Oh, oh that good. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Shout out to too. Conway. That helped a lot. Oh, yeah. So, because the dark hole was like, okay, when she got out of her, out her hole, I was still in mine. Mm. Doing what? So, Being a, did you become an alcoholic? That, and it's just one of those that, you know, I know intimacy was her thing, and mine was like, I feel like I was behind. Like in the world, talking and, from an economic standpoint. Yeah, mm-hmm. everything like father, husband. You know, you feel you was behind. Mm-hmm. Why? Let's talk about that, King. Why? <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like <clears throat> you know the Terrence Howard's coming up, my <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Howard. <laughs> I feel like I was behind because. Um, I missed so many things uh, like and I was so focused on how she was. I wasn't initially focused on myself. Yes. And I had to figure myself out doing that path of um, 
that hole that she was in and and it it got times where like you know she wanted to have sex and I'm like I, I mentally I just wasn't here right I wasn't in the mood and it kind of like detoured to oh I'm not pretty enough or if I look like this you will you would do this so it flipped and it was like it's not it's just this hole that I'm in I'm trying to keep myself out so the way that she so you stepped into depression you fell into depression mm -hmm. and it wasn't fair to my to my kids or and to her but uh, then after counseling that really helped a lot at community one that really helped a lot because they dug into all aspects of different situations and um that kind of like showed us to always be open because even though we were honest, we wasn't always fully honest with each mm -hmm. other when it comes to like our self-esteem or what's going on us mentally. It was just like, okay, I'm not going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt me. But then you go in the closet and be like, why am I like this? Yeah. You know? Y'all uh, weren't completely vulnerable. Y'all were honest with each other, but y'all weren't vulnerable. Yeah. And there was a big difference. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then w w what was revealed to you in counseling about yourself? And then I'm going to ask you, Chanel, what was revealed to you about yourself in counseling? <clears throat> Honestly, what was revealed to me that, and that was somebody, I always thought about but never like put a nail into in the coffin is that God got it under control literally um, and the stuff that I'm worrying about is out of my hands and the stuff that I'm fixing so it was like and it's crazy because we had arguments where like I fought for alcohol like it was a good thing yeah. like I was like it makes me a better man yeah. <laughs> it makes me peaceful Y'all want me to play? <laughs> Where's my crown? Like, I made an excuse for that. Yeah. So you say, you want me to play? Where's the crown? No, right. But, my, you know, and seeing my kids see that, I'm making an excuse for something that she was worried about. Yeah. And, because when she got out the hole, you know, that was in mine. And yeah. I'm I here. to pull them out. Yeah. Man. What, what, what was revealed to you in counseling about yourself? Well, first, first of all, <laughs> Um, you are so strong. Like, I don't think you realize how strong you are. And to to like help me come out of my dark spot, but then be stuck in his, like, you know, like you don't think about it. Like, here he is struggling, but he's still finding ways to tell me that I'm beautiful. He's still finding ways to like, you know, be present in the moment with me and to know that like I got out and he didn't. It's just rough. So, but he is, you know, he is out now. And it's just been, it's just been monumental in our relationship because, you know, you hear a lot about relationships and people think the biggest problems with relationships is infidelity or um, abuse, you know, like those things. And then they, they, that's just surface level. Like you don't think about your relationship with God. You don't think about, alcoholism you don't think about the way that you parent your insecurities all of those things play such a big role um and it can be hard to shake those things you know so I just wanted to say how proud I am of you because you are an amazing man you are my superhero you are the love of my life you've always been the love of my life that goes for you too you <laughs> you're stronger than who you are <laughs> appreciate like because do you held it down when I let it go? And you're an amazing woman. We got it. Yeah. And I'm sorry for using your socks when you didn't give me none. <laughs> that was definitely a... That was, I'm, I'm just... I'm sorry. We being... I used her socks <laughs> to take care of myself <laughs> when she didn't give me none. It, it was bad when you why, eat burgers why? sideways. So why, so why, why you have to use her socks? Why can't you use your own? I'm not using my socks. I gotta wear these socks. Cause my socks long. <laughs> <laughs> Your socks long. You use my military socks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I don't. Don't you finna can't give me cancel. No, I'm I don't playing. use military socks. No, I <laughs> No, I love the military. I would never do that. 
<laughs> oh my god! I never use a filter. Dude, no. Never. Okay, so what I learned from counseling was I can't critique him on how he's gonna help me, right? Like I think mm-hmm. as women, we're so used to being in so much control. As mothers, we want full control, and so there would be moments where. He would do something and I just felt like I could do it better or mm. he could have done this a little bit better. Or if you're going to change Ivy, you know, put the little things on tighter or, mm-hmm. you know. And so it got to a point where it was like you critiquing him. You're not encouraging him. You're not motivating him. So then when there were times where he would go and he drink and be like, well, I, I maybe it was to be numb. So because I was so, so nitpicky, you know, so I had to learn to encourage him, even if it was something messed up and I felt like I could have done it better. He did it. He didn't have to get up in the morning and help me with the kids or he didn't have to go the extra mile and make sure, you know, Kinsley had X, Y, and Z in her lunchbox because it's something that I forgot. Like he did those things and that's what mattered. I had to take off my blindfolds of saying, oh, he could have done better and, and realize he's doing it. And it's his way. <sighs> Worth the wait. I thought this would be about the weight of you gaining weight, but it's the weight of fatherhood, the weight of motherhood, the weight of um, substance abuse, the weight of being in this military and serving your country and then uh, walking with the weight of shame because they're saying, well, look at you. Now you're not good enough to be here. You're not even passing the the, the test to be to, to stay active and all this, it's just all this stuff. This is weight, the weight, the weight. Um, and the beautiful thing about it is that the weight was never intended for y'all to lift alone. Mm. Uh, the beautiful thing about it is that God said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. That's the weight that we give to God. And then what's so beautiful about marriage is that you two carry each other's weight. And I've watched y'all at the young age as y'all been uh, from 22 to 34 now is that y'all have been carrying each other when you were weak he said, let me hold you up. And when he was weak, you said, let me hold you up. And now y'all both are able to stand on your own two feet and uh, hold your kids up. So it's it's a beautiful thing when marriage is done right. Now, marriage isn't, people think that doing marriage right means we don't have any problems. We don't go through alcoholism or even infidelity, as you talked about, or all this other stuff that comes into the marriage that if it was right, if it was God ordained, we wouldn't go through anything. Mm -hmm. But that's what brings people to understand. How do you get to till death do we part? How do we get through those moments? It's going through the for better, for worse, the sickness and through health, uh, the the for richer, for poor. How did y'all navigate did y'all ever get to a place financially where y'all didn't have it? Y'all, yeah. y'all, yeah. How did y'all navigate through that? And how bad did it get? Man, we, we live in a hotel. Living payday loans and payday loans. As soon as I got paid, I had to pay that off and reborrow that again. Yeah. Just so that we could survive. Car with no AC. And it wasn't that we were in a hotel because we had an apartment, but we couldn't pay the light bill. And so we had to go to a hotel. And stay at this hotel for about a week. And that's when he took the temp job. And um, it was supposed to be one day. And it turned into like what? That's when I started driving trucks for Sigma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it ended up turning into a full job. When did he start um, chasing his aspirations as a, as a stuntman? From, from job. So he, he was always, always doing that. Yeah, so in the beginning... She didn't believe what I did for a living. And he showed me him next to Michael Ely because he was Michael Ely stunt double in comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so she she didn't believe. She's like, what do you do for a living? I was like, oh, I work in the film industry. She's like, okay, w- okay, what do you do? Like, what else? I said, I'm an actor stunt <laughs> what man. Else? What else? And she's like, how do you get paid? So I was like, that's how I get paid. <laughs> so I showed her, you know, I sent her a picture of my, Michael Ely. Then I started, you know, when I worked on, I think, was it The Butler? Mm-hmm. Oh, he did the butler. That's my movie. Yeah, the yeah. I was shot in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he took me with him. He was like, "This is my trailer." And I was in <laughs> a little trailer. Childish. 
<laughs> I was in the dining room scene, the Civil War scene where yeah. they start uh, throwing food and stuff. Uh, but and twelve years a slave, but the dude accidentally busted his lip, so they took his scene. We both out. we both bust our lip, but uh, anyway, it's neither here nor there. They took your scene out. Yeah, yeah. he was still in I the got residuals. My, my lip busted for nothing. No, my lip it was, was big too. It was so big. It was big. <laughs> But um, <laughs> yeah, she saw one of them checks. She was like, "Oh, okay, I get it now. This is it. I get it. So I'm gonna stand beside you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, "All right, I get it." But there were points in our relationship where, because I, we both wanted the family thing, but I wanted more kids, and he wanted to further himself and his, um, you know, his his acting career, and he had to put a lot of that on hold. And so, like, he was going to work, hating going to work. Every single day Hating him And I'm watching this man Like turn down movies Turn down production. Oh you was turning him down Because he There was no way He could do both Stability You know I was thinking You said you, So you chose stability A constant Check Over A big quick check Yeah it's, This is the thing That she And helps me um, God was, What God has for you Is for you and your journey is going to be, your destination is going to be there. So the sacrifice, is, so is it the fact that I missed the opportunity to be in the movies or my opportunity is to build movies? Mm, yeah. So now I changed my aspect of it where it's like, I just enjoy doing that. So, and now I'm building my own film production and uh, I was telling her, I was on she kept saying, and her and her mama, my mom said, like, I don't see you as an actor stunt man. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see you doing that. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, you're going to be a director. That's what you're going to do. You're going to direct films. You have a vision. You're going to. And I'm saying like, oh, OK, I can see that. And this happened three times. I'm on set. I'm with because uh, she spoke. She, she inboxed Will Smith to say, hey, yeah. you you're my husband's my husband. producer, direct. He's going to work with you. And two years later, they was on set together working on Emancipation. Emancipation. I wrote that I was man. on there first. I was on he set said, for seven months. I sure did. I she was wrote. like, excuse me, sir. This is my well, husband. But we understand that your wife has no problem DMing people. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, we're here now because of that situation. I go hard for him, okay? <laughs> we go hard, which I love that. But I was on was set. Would you have to talk to him and tell him that? What, Will Smith? Yeah. No, not that fast. But I was able to talk to him because uh, we had we do have a scene together, and you it, told his assistant, didn't you? Yeah, I told his assistant, yeah. and um, I think it ain't Craig. I told Willow. She seen it. I saw. I saw my story. She saw the story. Saw, <laughs> I told Willow. I told Red Table Talk and Willow. So if y'all watching and y'all ready for the next interview, what is it? He said, I told Will, Will, we saw you. I wrote you. Check your DM. Yeah. Check your DM now. <laughs> but I was on set and. Uh, and this was before we started shooting. I think we, we were COVID testing. And a guy came in, and I don't know the guy. He was like, hey, where's my trailer? And I was like, I, I don't know. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, you're not a director? And I was like, nah. He was like, well, if you're not, you're going to be. And he just walked off. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> Never seen this guy. So I called my wife, and she was like, hey, you better stop playing, guy. <laughs> you trying need... to tell you something. So when I turn down jobs, it's like, now that's my vision. Like, I'm going to get there Regardless of what job I take, it's just staying true and fruitful into what I do. I'm gonna get there regardless. For I know all things work together for the good for the them good that love them. God and yep. to the called according to his purpose. That's yeah. the scripture that I hold on to with bated breath with every decision that I make because we never know the process before the promise, but the promise will always be there. Yeah. The children of Israel, when they went to the promised land, they made it to the promised land. They never thought they'll be spending 40 years in the wilderness, but they made it there. Mm-hmm. So the process, and that's when you really lean the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge Christ and he will direct your path. Well, that's what that means to say that you are putting family first, you're putting consistency, you're building the, the home unit where profits of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. If I if you went around chasing every dollar and then your kids don't even know you, they come back and be like, hey, Amazon. You be like, hey, Amazon, I'm your daddy. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, for calling me Amazon, little kid. You, be like, you can't be 
you calling me that. You know what I'm saying? But now you recognize that you put your family first and you build that family unit and you have a supportive wife that that is always covering you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to have the wisdom to go, not now. See, a lot of times we think that everything is supposed to happen now because right. God said it. God said, whatsoever things I ask in his name shall be done. I want it now, now, now. But certain things that I've watched come uh, become manifest in my life, the process started 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. So when people look at the Dear Future Wifey podcast, how, how you get this? It blew up yeah. in three years. It got over 400,000 subscribers. I'm like, you don't understand the tears that I shed 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. You understand I had a dream one day, didn't think it was going to be me doing it, but I had a dream that it was about this guy who, um, and I was married at the time. I had a dream about this guy that mismanaged his marriage and committed adultery. After his divorce, he decided to make his life have purpose and he started this um it wasn't a podcast, it was a radio show. Mm -hmm. He had this radio show where he would talk uh, and share from a transparent standpoint what had gone on in his marriage so other people didn't make the same mistake. I just Mm -hmm. thought it was a script I was going to write. I didn't realize it was going to be me. Yeah. And then the movie is going to come afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So it was just all this art imitating life, life imitating art. And so that's why I want to uh, leave people with this uh, encouragement to say that God really got you. When you kept saying at the very beginning, like, dog, like, do I have to do it? Am I doing enough? Why am I feeling like a failure? Why am I doing this or whatever? And God said, son, I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. Um, so what do you do now? What do, what do you do now for a living, Chanel? So... Um I'm a fitness instructor, a virtual fitness coach. So I teach women who are like me, who wanted to lose weight, didn't know how to do it, didn't have all the money to make it happen. I teach them how to feel confident in themselves. We put, we pray every time we do the workouts um, and it's, it's just fun. Like I do that. Plus I also now am doing social media um, content creating. So. I know you're a brand ambassador. Go ahead and say it. Go you're ahead. Brand ambassador oh, what? I'm a brand saying? ambassador. I just signed with an agency Look called JXC you. Agency. Hey, JXC. There um, it is. So, yeah, that's what I do. What you do, King? Oh, I do Strictly Films. He's full time now. All our, you know, and it's crazy because like the content that she needs for like brands and stuff. You, you She's do. like, yeah, hey, baby, go get your camera and your lights. And, you know, did you see how this full circle experience yeah. happened from that camera? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, from you're the- right. <laughs> Dang. Wow. I never noticed that. Wow. That's what caught her attention at the very beginning, that dang camera. You're right. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's wow. wow. That camera. Can I get that footage? <laughs> Yo, and what's funny is that poem is about self love. Wow. Not knowing I was gonna need it for myself later on in life. Do you still mm-hmm. remember it? No, I don't. No, no. It's, it's bit of, <laughs> no. I remember snatching that wig. <laughs> wow. Man, let me tell y'all, uh, how do people connect with y'all? How can people uh find out about your fitness uh courses that you do? How how can they find out? Okay, so you can go to my social media for Coco Bay. Uh yeah, my my what is it called? Yeah, My sure. website is cocobayfitness.com. Spell it for the people. C O C O B A B E F I T N E S S dot com. Um, but more importantly, right? So me and my husband have started our own clothing line called Intentional, intentional Woman. An intentional, intentional man. man. And it's got two crowns. One is Love for it. him and one is for me. They're intertwined. Love because it. together we're royalty. So Love we do also sell our own clothing line, intentionalclothes.com. Um, and then you can find us or find me w- featuring him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on my social media. Love Chanel Anjay. What nice. about you? So films, how do people connect with you? What's your social media handles? Uh, I just do uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Yeah. The Real Dother, D-A-R-E-A. I mean, yeah. D-A-R-E-L. D O T H D O T H E R. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> that's your post right there. <laughs> so you said duh, D A. D A. Yeah. That's, you can't leave Shreveport. You take no, the man out of Shreveport. You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> take, can't take the Shreveport out the man. Duh. The right. Real, the real the dope. Real the real dope. Now what? Yeah, you know I mean? Yeah. So, so um, listen. I salute y'all. Thank y'all so much. I I understand why God wanted me to have y'all on the podcast. I know you felt like you had to um, petition your way on the podcast, but I recognize that God just wanted me to hear this story because this story is so encouraging. This 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 story added uh, another wrinkle 
on my brain about what marriage looks like. Mm -hmm. And I love being a student, sitting down, learning from from people and their stories. And so I I thank y'all. I thank y'all for having a seat on the yellow couch and um, sharing your story. Thank you for the transparency. I know y'all get the weight of social media judging y'all. Uh, before we close out, what are some of the comments that you heard from when y'all, sh- t- uh, sh- anytime y'all share y'all story, y'all get a lot of pushback. <laughs> Yeah. Trauma bond. We are a trauma bond. I cheated on him last night. I'm controlling. I got money. He hit me. <laughs> We're um, broke. We only have $50. It's fake. We hear all kind of stuff. Yeah, it's fake. This is, they don't really live together. We hear all kind of stuff. <laughs> somebody <laughs> said that she was a man. Yeah, somebody <laughs> called me a man. It was like, or, and a male order bride from China. So you're a man and a male order bride. Yeah, I've heard one, it all. One the and a I stripper named that. Candy. A stripper named so, Candy. So I've heard a lot. <laughs> That's like it's they say you're stripping that candy. So my my clients call me Coach Candy. <laughs> so these are some of the comments that they leave under your your videos. Mm-hmm. I be blocking left and right. But I ain't got time for this. Let me block y'all. But it's so crazy that just nobody believes in what's true anymore because oh, yeah. it's so many or that lives. can happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you know, no offense. When I see like when I. I like when I love my wife watch Atlanta Housewives. Yeah. Because I show her how grateful she is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could be one of those guys. I could be having side chicks. Or maybe I'm going on tour, you know. <laughs> right. He do be like, see, this, see, this is what you it's could It's real. Have. It's real. But I it's believe real. in love. I believe in like Kadeem and DeVille. I absolutely love them. When I say I love them, that's they my are people. So yeah. they are that's so my weird. people. Uh, and I love how transparent they are to say mm-hmm. this is how they got there. It's not that everything was perfect. They had their journey there and they made it and they keep recommitting themselves to each other. Yeah. And that's what true love is, is the recommitment of each other as y'all grow through different seasons and different mm-hmm. stages. Because who Chanel is at 34 definitely ain't the young woman at 21. Yeah. And who Dothra is at, you're still, you're 34 too. Mm-hmm. At 34 ain't the same little dude that was running around talking about let's have sex and pray about it afterwards. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we evolve, we grow, we mature. Um, and he's definitely, a glory to God, ain't the same guy that was codependent on alcohol in order to numb his pain yes. that he rose above that and conquered that Goliath in his life mm-hmm. and so King I salute you um, and that's good that you talked about that because we haven't addressed other issues we talk about cheating a lot on the podcast we don't talk about um mental illness we don't talk about and I mean from a degree of can you stay married I want uh, if you are out there and you and your spouse, deal with mental illness on a deep level and y'all are still married or you may have gotten a divorce because it got too crazy. Uh, I would love to talk about that in tough topics because when we talk about through sickness and health, we mm-hmm. talk about the physical health, but we never talk about the mental health. We never right. talk about what if your spouse um, it has gone, I have a friend who was married to this guy or her last husband, well, her first husband and she ain't got married yet, uh, remarried, but he felt like the government was following them and he would put foil all under the mattresses oh, and he wow. would run around and they would be moving every time or whatever. She's like, this is this is a lot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He driving down the street. He's saying somebody chasing him. He's swerving, doing all that stuff. What what, is, what does that look like being married to someone oh, wow. that's, that's mentally unhealthy? Right. And um, what does God say about that? Does they committed or what? Hmm. Um but all that stuff. So yeah, if you're a couple that that's dealt with that or you've gotten a divorce because of that, DM me. Um, Chanel Dotha, thank y'all so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank y'all for coming on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Hey, y'all support them like we always do. Show them love. Leave a comment. DM them. Show them how... Uh, let them know how much this episode impacted your life. Um, be sure not to DM Dother if you're an attractive woman because uh, <laughs> Chanel will be in those DMs. Uh, we talked about that. She will be. So uh, why? So what? what so uh, what you no, say? No, I won't. What, what you say, Chanel? What you say? You be looking. Like? <laughs> <laughs> she said when she had gained a bunch of weight that when a girl had DM'd and she was slim, she'd be like, oh, so watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. She was looking like me and be like, oh, she's fine. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's beautiful. <laughs> she talking about <laughs> Put that out there. Everyone is beautiful. Everybody is beautiful. <laughs> so I want to get canceled. No, mm-hmm. for real. <laughs> everybody be everybody. <laughs> but listen, thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. Hey, y'all yeah. give it up for Chanel and Dothy. Psych. <laughs> 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 he was like, nah, I know you wait on that. <laughs>
Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTeris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, spiritually aligned, there will be no question if we are spiritually aligned, our umbilical cords have always remained connected to our Heavenly Father. The source of our nutrients and strength. Isn't life so much sweeter with us doing life and God's will together? God confirms our union each time you inhale and I exhale your breath while you sleep, a kiss away. You make being a husband an honor. You restored favor into my life. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you make me rejoice that the Lord favors me. How do I know? Because only God 
could bring me a blessing wrapped in your skin. You make me smile at just about everything that involves you. Your biggest fan. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.